succulents. Welcome to those who are new to my channel and welcome back to those who've been here before. Today I'm going to go ahead and tackle uh, Graptovaria fred eyes. Go over a little background information on that succulent. Um, and for those who haven't seen it before, it's a very beautiful succulent. It's a fairly large succulent and um, we have one in our backyard. Um, I've been wanting to do a little maintenance on it and today is the day. I actually clipped it about a week and a half ago and so the the cuts have already callus so they're ready for replanting because of the fact there was some mealybug infestations I needed to get in there and um, do a little treatment before it starts spreading to other plants in the garden so if you're interested in Graptovaria fred eyes or learning about how to treat a mealybug infestation or if you just happen to like succulents and gardening in general well then this video is for you be sure to hit that subscribe button before the video ends and just keep on watching let's get started So this is the leggy Graptovaria fred ives. It is actually a hybrid of Paraguayense, Graptopetulum Paraguayense, or ghost plant, and the Echeva Echeveria gibiflora. So what they did is they mixed it together and um, if you notice ghost plants, sometimes they have this habit too of becoming leggy like that. And then the, the size comes from the Echeveria high, uh, Gibiflora features. So anyway, um, it took a while for me to just cut off um, all the rosettes. I left about three to five inches under each rosette if I could. Otherwise, for something like this, I just snipped it off. That way, I can just stick it in the soil. I'm using my Friskar clippers there. And if you notice, those stems are very thick. So um, I still have them. I'm probably going to see if I can um, get some propagation going. That last picture was of the, a leaf that was actually propagating on the stem itself. So if um, I've had some success with just planting the stems in soil and little babies coming from the stems as well. So it was quite a task. And while I was doing um, these cuttings, I did realize that there was an infestation of the mealybugs. So I had to uh, we had to make sure we can address that issue before replanting it or introducing it back into the garden. This is that crest and more rosettes. Okay, so these are the cuttings that we're gonna be working on today. You can see here. And then these are the supplies that I will be using to treat the mealybugs. So for those of you who do not know what mealybugs are, let me show you an example of them. For instance, here we go. Mealybugs are, they look like white cottony things in between the leaves. They don't even look like bugs at all. It just looks like white, whiteness. Once you see those, bugs are actually sucking the juices out of your plant and it can create some wounds in the plant if it's not addressed cause it to be exposed to other types of pests and diseases so that's why it's important to actually um, look at your plants and see if there's anything like that in between the leaves they like to get in there in the crevices of the leaves they also like um, new growth, and you can see it in between here. Just a lot of them. So that's what we're going to handle. They're just bugs that are just trying to survive also in our ecosystem, but we don't want them 
they are plants. So easy for them. There we go. To blow onto another plant and spread like wildfire. So mealybugs, the females are the ones that um, are the majority of the ones that you will see. While the males, which have wings, are the ones you don't usually see. So there is a symbiotic relationship between mealybugs and ants. Mealybugs produce this, um, I guess, the sweet, syrupy um, juice that ants like. So they protect the the mealybugs because it's it's their food source. So anyway, this happens to be a crest, and it's probably because of the mealybugs. A cr the, whenever a plant forms a crest like this, where it's thicker, the, the stem becomes thicker like this. Um, it is a defense mechanism against a wound that it's, it has had. Um, when there is an infection or um, some kind of infestation, the plant goes into overload or grows faster than it normally does. And so that's why it ends up cresting like this. But they're kind of like those freaks in nature that are very beautiful. So I'm so glad I was able to catch this. We're just going to go ahead and replant it. The recommendation is 70% or lower of isopropyl rubbing alcohol so it doesn't burn your plants. It will kill the bug, but it will not damage the plant. Um, I'm going to mix a little bit of soap. This is actually bubbles that I got at a wedding, but it's soap. It's actually soap. So it's a small dilution of soap that I'm going to add a few droplets in there. And I also have Q-tips, which I will be applying it onto the plant and the mealybug itself to clean it off. So once I rub it on there, I'm going to just rinse them off with water and they should be good to go and ready for repotting. Go ahead and mix the alcohol with a few droplets of the, the soap or the bubbles. You can use any dishwashing liquid soap or shampoo. And then grab a Q-tip and a succulent and start at going at it. If you notice, the technique is really to just push gently against um, signs of the mealybugs, the white cottony, um, the white cotton things that you see in between the leaves with the q-tip and just squeeze it out. There, I just grabbed one right there if you can, if you notice that. They look like little oblong pieces of rice or poppy seeds that needs to be removed and you notice the tip of that q-tip has turned orange that means uh, the mealybug was killed with the alcohol and the q-tip so it's the pressure of the q-tip and the I guess the toxicity of the alcohol that uh, eradicates the mealybugs there are different methods of killing mealybugs um, there is also neem oil there's also lemon and water I, uh, I've heard of uh, people using vinegar or mixtures of baking soda, but the one that works for me that I've been using for many years is just simply alcohol. Um, I've introduced the, the, the soap just to make it a little bit more potent because look at that. Disgusting. Ew. A lot of mealybugs on this poor little plant here. See the orange there? That means you have succeeded in killing that mealybug. So that's the gist of So here they are, already treated. This is my favorite one, which is the Crested uh, Graptovaria, Fred, Graptovaria Fred Ives. So they look a little dehydrated, of course, because they haven't been in any type of soil for the past one and a half weeks. soon they're going to be just as gorgeous as when we first had them let me just show you some cuttings i took earlier um, maybe a few months ago that were from that same mother plant with all the the legging the legginess and here they are they were about that size when they first started now they've grown really really large so this is my hand. See how big they are already. So they're loving it in the 
this location. That side, it's not as um, shady. So you can notice that they are smaller. They haven't really grown, but this area gets more shady. plants too, just like the Ionians. I love Graptoveria for the hives. The color is amazing. There's purples and greens. I just love them. So anyway, that's the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. And be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video. I hope you spend some time in your garden. Have a great day everyone.